Your NHS is something to be proud of. The crown of the country. Something you can count on. It's the most socialist system you can think up. Where access to healthcare isn't based on income. It's publicly owned. It's publicly funded. It doesn't bow to capital or listen to the voice of greed. The public will know this and that's why it's trusted. It doesn't matter who you are. It's free. At the point of need. And we all need it. I mean, take a second to think about the people in your life who have had to use the NHS or else they would have died. In fact, without the NHS and all that it provides, how many of you would even be here today alive? Britain's got the best health service in the world. And the Commonwealth Fund said we're number one as well. So I wondered to myself what you would do if I showed you a very different angle a very different picture of the biggest type of scandal. What would you do if I said the NHS was being cancelled, stabbed and strangled, smashed and dismantled? Now, <laughs> I realise that might sound strange. After all, on the surface, it seems like nothing's changed. Your hospital's still there, your doctor's still the same. But deep beneath the surface, it's all been rearranged. This is the reality. And if you feel to listen, I'll try to break it down for you. I'll start from the beginning. So we all go to work. We work hard and pay tax. Our tax is what makes up the government's budget. The budget is what funds the NHS cash, but the Tories in Britain are cutting all the funding. So when we need to build new hospitals, equipment and beds, apparently we can't because of deficit and debt, which for anyone who knows about austerity and theft means they starve your NHS and give your tax to banks instead. So the private finance initiative was introduced also known as PFI, going back to 92. This is when the government bring a private group in to fund the public infrastructure, hospitals included. Private groups have big checks and they're more than happy to invest because when they get their money back, we pay a lot of interest. PFI consortiums are robbing us as we speak. St. Bartholomew's pays two million a week in interest. And PFI have built 100 hospitals in total. And this is one of the reasons why people are so vocal because if we built them publicly, we'd pay 11 billion but now, through PFI, we'll pay a tenth of a trillion. With this colossal loss of wealth, plus the government cuts to funding, it's easy to see how the NHS is crumbling. But by far, without a doubt, the biggest threat to health is the Health and Social Care Act of 2012. Now, the act itself is over 400 pages, so me trying to break it down would take flipping ages. But I know you love the NHS and really want to save it, so I'll say this in a way that's most easy to explain it. For 60 years and more, since 1948, your NHS was real cause to call this country great. The Secretary of State has had the legal obligation to provide health care for the entire population. But the Health and Social Care Act devolves responsibility. It abdicates the government from NHS delivery. The services become run by clinical commissioners who are private companies and not health practitioners. The act in fact enables them to open up a market. Healthcare was free before, but now we're the bargain. You become a target and you can fight your hardest, but this legislation is the nail in your casket. You'll be forced from social welfare into the jaws of private healthcare. And we all know what that means. I mean, as a director of a company, there's only one objective, only one directive, only one incentive. Profit and lots of it, however you've got to get it, and once you've gone and got it, then it needs to be protected. So if they sell insurance, then they'll start to get selective. They'll turn away the sickest because you're not a good investment. The poor who can't afford to get insurance get rejected. We die and you and I are forced to just accept it. That's what's gonna happen here. It's not an empty threat. If you're not upper class or rich, then you'll be left for dead. But they demonize your doctors, overwork your nurses, underfund your hospitals and overburn the service. It's actively happening. They're doing it on purpose. They're doing it just to try and justify their murders. But I say stand with the workers, because they stand with you. Family is true. They're battling for you. When they fight, it's for you. When they strike, it's for you. If they don't sign a contract, that is for you. This is your future. This is your fight. This is your healthcare. This is your life. This is your duty. This is your test. This is your war. This is your NHS.